Good morning and welcome to worship in this season of Easter. Welcome to all of you listening on the radio and on Facebook Live and a little later on, those of you who might watch this on YouTube, welcome to you as well. My goodness, it is cold outside. I did not expect to have to wear my winter coat on May 10th. So um, that, that, that was just a little unexpected. But it's Minnesota, and that's what we um, have to get used to. Thank you to Rick for managing our technology, as always. Thank you to Rachel and Pastor Lane for providing music today. Um, and happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers. I want to say a special um, happy Mother's Day to my mom and my backup moms, Aunt Lucy and Aunt Diane, and my sister, who's an awesome mom, and my sister-in-law, Julie, who's an awesome mom. All of you moms, people who mother, you don't have to have kids to be a mom. I feel like it sometimes. Um, happy Mother's Day. And I hope that you get to Zoom in with your kids or your moms, however that works, or, or you know, somehow get to make contact anyway. Um, just a couple of quick reminders that we are closed um, through the rest of the month. Um, the office is closed, and we're going to continue to do our worship services this way. Um, this response team will be meeting later this week to um, determine um, exactly how we're going to go forward after May 31st. We're also getting um, some more advice from the Synod on Thursday, and so we'll take that into consideration along, of course, with um, guidance from the state and from our medical professionals. Just check the website. Um, check on uh, 498 Amen or 498 Hope if you have if, for updates. Um, also, just wanted to let you know that um, some of the wonderful selections, our hymn of the day selections, are gradually being added to our YouTube site. So if you happen to have missed any of those, um, we're adding them a little bit at a time so you can kind of peruse our playlist on there. And I um, I think, oh, uh, just one other thing, um, don't forget we do have our little free pantry down at the bottom of the steps on the southeast corner of the church. Um, lots of little canned goods and, um, you know, some boxed items, a lot of um, non-perishable items, and a, a few masks as well. So if you or anyone you know um, need just a few things to get by, um, we've got that little free pantry down at the bottom of the stairs. And I think that is all of the announcements for this morning. So with that, we're going to begin worship. Let's start with a deep cleansing breath. Let the spirit in and all our anxieties out for the next few minutes. And we'll begin with our gathering hymn number 530. Hear, O Lord, your servants gather.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also also with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, God, your Son, Jesus Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. Amen. Today's reading is from Acts, the seventh chapter, beginning with the 55th verse. It is about Stephen. He was one of the seven men chosen by the apostles to serve tables so that the apostles could be free to serve the word. Stephen does more than distribute food, however. For his preaching of God's word, he becomes the first martyr of the faith. And here's the gospel. But filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, Receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit, You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. My time is in your hand. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies and my persecution. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. And the Holy Gospel for the fifth Sunday of Easter is taken from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Glory to you, O Lord. On the night that Jesus is to be arrested, he shares his final words with his disciples. As the one through whom God is known, Jesus promises to go before them and act on their behalf. Now listen to the Gospel. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. But then Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. And then Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, 
then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and, in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And my friends, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, when we are lost, you shepherd us, you find us, and you show us the way. Remind us of that, that no matter how far away we feel, you are going to guide us home. In your name we pray. Amen. So I would guess that um, most of us, many of us anyway, at one time or another have been on some sort of a road trip um, with a, a family, for a family vacation, you know, mom and dad or whomever in the front seat and the kids are all in the back or in my case, uh, in the way back, we had the old 1968 Chevy Nomad station wagon. Um, and so it was, it was a really good thing to be in the way back. Um, and so on these road trips, you know, maybe you were going to Yellowstone or maybe you were going up north or whatever, sometimes if it was a new place, of course you would need a road map. Now all of you kids out there, yes, we used to have things called road maps and they were very large and you could get them free at a gas station um, and you'd have to fold them up in just a particular place and then you'd put them in the glove compartment. And if you got to a new state, then you'd pull out the next uh, state map and you'd you know, roll that out and try to find the road that you were going on. And this was how we got to places we didn't you know, know how to get to. So one of my um, favorite stories about a road trip in my family, because this is Mother's Day, I have to tell a story about my mom. My mom, many of you have met her, my mom is pretty awesome, um, and I don't just say that because she's my mother, she's just in general, anybody would grade her as awesome on that scale. Um, she's smart, she's um, capable, she's sensible, she's cute as a button, but she has always had a little bit of a, um, a challenge driving in city traffic, and a lot of people do. Um, so this story concerns the very first time she ever had to drive from our home, which at the time was in Bur Oak, Iowa, just up the road, to Minneapolis, where my Aunt Lucy and my Uncle Dean lived, and my dad was not along, so she had to do this on her own. So I was only probably five, and my brother was three, and we were going from Bur Oak to Minneapolis, and I believe my grandma and my Aunt Diane were along as well in the car. And because my mom had a lot of insecurity, this was the first time she'd done this trip, my Uncle Dean had taken a road map, and especially of the part once you get up to the cities from their house to, or from the bottom of the cities, the, the, you know, the south part of the cities up to their house, he had taken a green marker and highlighted all of the roads and all the turns that she needed to take to get to their house. So all we had to do was follow that green marker, and I would imagine that either my grandma or my aunt was in the passenger seat, you know, telling her following this green marker. So everything went fine until we had to get off the interstate and go onto you know, the side streets to get to their house. And instead of you know, going off onto the next street, my mom took the entrance wrap and went right back onto the freeway. So we didn't quite get there exactly as planned. I don't exactly remember the details of how we ended up at their house. Um, but afterward, my brother, in all his three-year-old wisdom, said, why didn't Uncle Dean just draw the green line right on the road. I mean, that would have been easy to follow, right? Put the, fold the map up and put it away. In our reading from John today, this is essentially what is going on. The disciples want a map and not, you know, they don't just want directions. They don't just want, you know, a map with a green line. They kind of want Jesus to tell them everything, you know, directions on where we're going, etc. Last week we had um, the, the parable of the sheep and the gate and the gatekeeper, and Jesus said, you know, I am the gatekeeper. You know, you go in and out through me. You have security and you have freedom. And so this week we get to another one of these great I am statements in John. I am the way and the truth and the life. I am the way. The disciples, though, immediately have questions. 
Thomas wants to know, how can we know the way? You know, and Philip is like, show us the way. Don't, I, he didn't even have a question. He just was like, give me, give me, you know, don't bother with giving me the directions. Just lead me right there. I, I need that, um, that very strong certainty about where I'm going. This whole um, episode is the, what we, part of what we call the farewell discourse. This is taking place on when we celebrated or, or commemorated on Thursday, Monday, Thursday, it's the last supper, it's the last night that the disciples will be with Jesus. And they maybe don't exactly know that. He's been telling them that um, over and over again, but they can definitely sense that there's something is going to happen. Jesus is, is going somewhere, and there's a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear. And this this whole um, episode from, from John immediately follows Peter asking Jesus, where are you going? Why can't I follow you? The disciples have lots of questions. And Jesus is trying to reassure them, you know, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe. Just believe. This don't let your hearts be troubled is often um, a, a, a verse that we use at funerals. And um, I have done a number of funerals where we're offering consolation to those who are left in grief because their loved one is with Jesus and they can't go there yet. And Jesus, you know, promises that we will be consoled and that their loved one is in a better place with him. But Jesus doesn't promise us still while we're here that there are not going to be any hard times. He doesn't say, you know, don't let your hearts be troubled because everything is going to be rosy on whatever path it is you're on. He only says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't lose heart along the way. There will be things that happen that are sorrows and griefs. Don't let your hearts be troubled. I am with you, and I will always be with you. In the book of Revelation, which was also uh, written by either John or one of John's followers, um, Jesus is described as the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, which I find very um, comforting in many, many ways, because if you put Jesus on a map and we put ourselves on that map, it means wherever we start, Jesus is there. Wherever we end, Jesus is there. It almost doesn't matter where you're going. Jesus is going to be there at the beginning and the end. Even if you get lost along the way, Jesus is going to be there along the way. Throughout life, and especially right now, but throughout life, we all want a map. We all want directions. We all want to be led. And we all always have a question, you know, are we there yet? Are we there yet? That's, a, that's one of those things. I have um, found it very comforting in, um, ever since I was a kid, but especially lately, I say the now I lay me prayer when I go to bed. Now I lay me down to sleep, etc., because it ends with guide my ways, guide my ways. And when I pray in the morning, one of the things that I ask Jesus for always is guidance. You know, whatever direction I'm going, whatever I, I need to do that day, guide me, guide me. And this is the good news. We look back to the text and we find out that we don't need a map. We don't need to worry about the fact that we don't have the directions. We don't exactly know where we're going. We don't know if we're there yet. Because Jesus says, I go and prepare a place for you. I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. The good news is Whenever we feel lost, no matter where it is, Jesus is the beginning and the end of wherever we're going, and Jesus will come and get us and take us with him. And that is the good news for today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you are the guide that we need throughout our life. Guide us in these days of uncertainty and anxiety that we might be reminded always that you are with us. In your name we pray. Amen. Our next hymn is number 815, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light.
by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. Build us up, Mothering God, as living stones united in your spiritual house. Bless our bishops, Elizabeth and Regina. Bless our partner congregations in Southeast Minnesota, South Sudan, Tanzania, and Colombia, and bless this congregation. Strengthen your church as we are called to proclaim your love in uncertain times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing and rest, we pray for all who desire healing in body and spirit. We pray for those isolated physically and emotionally, for the grieving and especially for the family and friends of Ann Pulowski. We pray for the unemployed and underemployed, for prisoners, for those suffering from addiction, mental illness, chronic suffering, fear, and grief. Look after health care workers, essential workers, leaders in our country, state, and local governments, farmers and farm families. And especially today, Lord, we ask that you be the way, the truth, and the life for all those in our communities, our congregations, and our families who suffer. For Bob Eilers, Lori Wilhelmson, Karen Hovey, Sonny Rood, Mary Amundsen, Helen Melbested, Lucas A.J. Wistie, Steve Thorson, Gordon Eddy, Tom Ellingson, Sharon Storley, Sue Alseth, Sharon Johnson, Betty Johnson, Vi Musser, Pat Blagsved, Rachel Krensky, Shirley Gerard, Mavis Johnsrud, Sandra Wenig, Anna Bingham Yiris, Sawyer Oaks, and Jennifer Wedman. We also pray today for support and guidance to the parents who are teaching their children at home at this time, to our high school and college seniors, and for all those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Nurturing God, we pray for all those who tend and teach young children, for the safe pregnancies of expectant parents, and for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care, and we remember all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one, both near and far, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn is number 379, Now the Green Blade Rises.
Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace, share in the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Thank you.